Tokyo Game Show this year was absolutely crazy between it and all of the surrounding events with like the Nintendo Direct and Sony State of Play and RGG uh, Showcase. It was an absolutely incredible year for us RPG fans. And we're going to talk probably about a lot of the things that happened there eventually. Bakusan JRPG and I had a podcast that we recorded live on Thursday night this week and we just covered everything and it went on for like four hours. And because I know that there's no way that everybody's going to watch a four hour video of people just rambling on about all the cool stuff that happened at TGS, there was one thing that I knew I at least wanted to address and make a video about because people have continued to ask me about it during my live streams as well. And that is kind of what my thoughts are regarding Konami, Suikoden, and Aiden Chronicle and this whole situation where Konami seems to be trying to turn over a new leaf and they are bringing this new beloved game that's beloved around the world and and then it's it's Suikoden 1 plus 2 and Suikoden 1 plus 2 are beloved games people do love them people pay incredibly bizarre prices for the physical copies and they were expensive before video game collecting went completely cuckoo so there's uh, obviously just a lot of love for these games out there, and I'm excited for anybody who hasn't had a chance to actually play these yet, because it looks like, knock on wood, if, if they do a good job, this could be a really excellent way to experience these classic RPGs. I'm excited to see what they're able to do, but what kind of feels wrong, what kind of feels bad to me is the timing of this whole... Uh, this whole situation, right? Konami, are they really trying to turn over a new leaf? Are they really trying to embrace the Suikoden fan base here and 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 say, you know, baby, we'll be better this time, I swear. Is it ever better? I don't know. I hope so. There's some some things, some some conflicts going on here in my mind. It feels to me a lot like Konami at this point are riding the coattails of Yoshitaka Moriyama. Yoshitaka Moriyama, by the way, for those who don't know, is the creator of the original Suikoden and Suikoden 2 and Suikoden 3. He worked with Junko Kawano. These are like the two big people behind all of the stories that we know and love from Suikoden. Well, those two people have gone off on their own. They have gone off and they've created Euden Chronicle. And Euden Chronicle 100 Heroes looks absolutely incredible. And it's ignited in all of the, the the fans of Suikoden, a new fervor. And we're all incredibly excited because this game looks like it's going to be great. Konami now sees this big fervor. They see this in renewed interest in these kinds of games. And Konami, they like money, right? Companies in general like money decided to put out Suikoden 1 and 2. Now that Yoshitaka Moriyama and Junko Kawano and the rest of the team behind Euden Chronicle has done the market research and they've proven that there's an interest, now that the indies have gone out on a limb to risk themselves financially and they've done the hard work of, of drumming up interest and, and Konami, big old Konami, decides, hey, let's capitalize on that. Let's ride the coattails of the indie developer to hopefully leverage some credibility once again. You know, that's a very cynical view. It was a very cynical perspective of Konami. But why shouldn't I have a cynical perspective of Konami at this point? Konami has had a long and sordid history that, I mean, even just glossing over the whole threatening to sue Kojima for accepting a game award for a game that he had worked on, like, Beyond that, Konami has a long history of like really poorly treating their their developers, locking them in rooms over crunch time, literally locking them into a building and says, well, you can't come out until it's done. Like that's that's classic Konami, you know, Konami is one of those companies that may or may not have had alleged ties to, you know, some really dangerous underground stuff uh, back in the day, uh, ties to certain organizations that, you know, aren't always on the up and up, shall we say? You know, there's there's lots of interesting stories that I have read about in, uh, there was a, a book series by John Stabandnik called 
uh, the untold histories of game developers, of Japanese game developers, and uh, I have all three, and they've got some interesting stories about like the early days of video games and ties to like organized crime. And we know about how they treated people during crunch, and we know how they treat their developers who leave. Konami has, for a long time, been embracing like their their gambling side of things, their their pachi slot machines and stuff. I mean, that's what it is. It's gambling. And I suspect that what's been happening in Japan, people haven't been going out and drinking, you know? So Japan's uh, <laughs> government have actually been making these PSAs, encouraging Japanese people to actually go out and drinking. Is that still a PSA at this point, to, to go out and encourage you to damage your liver because it's good for the economy? Anyways, I suspect that not only has going out and drinking together probably been on the decline, and I, I don't know this, but I suspect that other public things, spending of time in these maybe uh, arcades where these patchy slot machines are, probably also on the decline, and now Konami's actually maybe really up against the ropes. So. They're strapped for cash. They see this indie developer who has left Konami and decided to to try to make something as uh, in their original vision. And now all of a sudden, Konami, the the prodigal son, returns. Hey, everybody, let's let's make the the best the best RPGs that we ever released. Let's go relive the glory days. Now that Ayuden Chronicle has everybody excited, I don't know. I feel very conflicted. I don't like Konami as a company. I, I, I'm not conflicted about that. The people at Konami at this point are the people who have stuck by Konami the entire time that they've been abandoning video games in favor of pachinko machines and have been in lockstep with all of these awful policies. I, the people left at Konami are the ones who, <laughs> who are left. Everything else, everybody at this point who was appalled by the behavior of Konami, they've left, right? So what we have left are the people who stayed through the worst of Konami, whether that be, I guess, through dedication to Konami or um, what's the other word? Um, complacence? Complicit? I mean, apparently the things that Konami has been remaking lately have been okay. And the game itself is probably going to be okay. But I still don't have to like Konami about this. And it feels bad to see Konami, a company that I don't trust, I wouldn't trust them as far as I could throw the, one of their pachinko machines, to see them digging up the corpse of this beloved franchise and uh, parading it around a little bit with a, you know, a new, a new suit on, it just doesn't feel right especially when they're trying to capitalize on the hard work of, of an indie developer. Now that said, I'll take a look at the game. I'm, I'm excited to see if they do a good job because it's a great game because it was made by Yoshitaka Murayama and Junko Kawano several years ago by people not involved with Konami, the Konami of today, right? So I'm sure that if they don't screw it up, which is possible, they could still screw it up, but if they don't, if they don't screw it up, this could be a really good way to play the games. I guess what I'm trying to say is in all of this, I'm excited for it, but I don't like Konami and I don't want to support Konami. There goes my, my reviewer copy, I'm sure, but honestly, I, I could do without them. Unless they're really turning over a new leaf, you know, whatever. I hope that they are. It, I've, I guess we'll just have to, to wait and see and continue to hype responsibly. But uh, I guess that that's really about all that I feel like I have on my chest and I just wanted to get that all out there. And I want to know what your thoughts are on Konami and Ayuden and Suikoden 1 plus 2. Like, of course, I want them to return to the old Konami. I want, I want to see them revive other franchises and like Ganbare Goemon, and to become great again and to make new entries in the Suikoden series. But I cannot get my hopes up for this. Gonna sit back, hype responsibly, and enjoy the hell out of Ayuden Chronicle upon its release, I'm sure. So until next time, guys, have a great rest of your day. If you're new here and if you liked what I had to say about 
Ayudin Chronicles, Suikoden, and Konami, and Rabbit and Bear Studios. Get subscribed because I'm Super Derek. I make thoughtful and thought-provoking videos for gamers who love RPGs. And I'll see you guys all in the next one. Have a great day, everybody.